Has turtle mania gotten out of hand? Bill Lagatuda is with us now in Burbank to take a closer look. Hey, Bill. The Ninja Turtles have had many renditions over the years. Different comic book runs, all the movies, just on TV alone they've had a number of shows. And today I want to briefly touch on some TV shows that almost happened but didn't make it. I've touched on some of them in previous videos but I wanted to put them all together in an easily digestible video and share them all here with you guys. Real quick, if you're new to the channel and you want more Ninja Turtles related content in your life, old, new, upcoming turtle stuff, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. But as we always do, grab a slice of cheesy, cheesy pepperoni pizza and let's dive into the sewers and look at four TMNT shows that almost happened. The four kids TMNT show in 2008 were once planning a pretty interesting season at one point. Instead of TMNT Back to the Sewer, we almost got TMNT Overload. Four kids and Mirage seemed to be on board with it to a certain degree, but Playmates shut it down. Old blogs that are no longer available but due to use of certain time machine websites can be looked at to recall details of what almost happened. A blog dated October 2nd, 2007 by the name of The Fifth Turtle says, A month or so ago, producers and the creative team at 4Kids Productions pitched TMNT Overload. The basic idea behind Overload is that the turtles, while traveling through time in their return home from the fast forward season, briefly get stuck in the past alongside their kid selves. And then, thanks to quantum mechanics and villainous plot shenanigans, all eight turtles arrive in the year 2008 together. An incredibly powerful digital villain has taken over the world wide web and sets his sights on the real world. The turtles take on their greatest and most annoying opponents ever themselves as kids and then it says think adventures in babysitting and you get the gist. Now this would have been, well let me know down below what you think. I think this could have been pretty bad in my opinion, but I'm curious to hear what all you guys have to say. Peter Laird even touched on it at one point in his personal blog. The blog reads, the TMNT overload proposal for the season of 4Kids TMNT TV series was intended to immediately follow the fast forward season. It was to feature the turtles getting involved in adventures somehow with their younger selves, the so called turtle tots, who had appeared in several flashback episodes in previous seasons. He goes on to say, I confess I don't have many clear memories of this project, though I'm fairly sure I did approve of it with reservations. 2001 was an interesting time for the Turtles. It seemed like there was a number of possible projects we could have gotten. Before the 2003 show had come out, Mirage had pitched an idea for a show over at Warner Brothers. An animatic was even created, giving a preview to the studio. It is said that it would have either aired on Cartoon Network or Kids WB. A ton of concept art was made for this show. The Turtles appeared to have the most Mirage comic book inspired art style to them than any animated version has ever had. Even since then, Shredder is also shown with a few different color palettes and other characters can be seen as well. Development went as far as early prototypes of the toys they would have used for this TV series to be created. Images can be found online. Funny enough though, it looks very similar to the figure style they went with for the 2003 TMNT show figures. The Mighty Mutanimals. Wait a minute, what is this you may be asking? Real quick, for some of you who may not know, the Mutanimals are a crime fighting team made up of Ninja Turtle side characters. They've appeared in the comics, TV shows, and video games. And in 1992, Mirage Studios apparently pitched a cartoon to Ruby Spears Productions. Ruby Spears Productions, known for working on such shows as Scooby Dooby Doo, Where Are You? Just to name a few members that would have been included, Mondo Gecko, Ray Follette, Leatherhead, and others would have been part of the group. And it would have had the turtle show up for the first few episodes and Krang would have been brought over as the main villain of the show. If you go over to the Steve Levine, Ryan Brown blog, which reads in the bio, Peter and Kevin had us design, pencil, ink, and color lots of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles art for a lot of TMNT product back in the 80s and 90s. On this blog, posted in 2007, an image of what Krang would have looked like for the show, clearly different than how he looked in the 1987 cartoon of the Ninja Turtles. They've also posted other pictures from their animation bible they used for the show to streamline all the designs. Here's the rest of the heroes and what 
they would have looked like. By the looks of this, they also would have gone through some of these redesigns for this Mighty Mutanimals animated series that almost happened. They would have had wrist communicators and a floating fortress. There's a picture of this fortress on the blog and the caption reads, The Den is a secret high-tech headquarters of the Mutanimals built by Donatello. To be disguised as a volcanic island, the Den is both home and a mobile HQ for the team. Ocean-based, the Den can maneuver across all the Earth's seas. Donatello would have probably done this in the first few episodes. Now last but not least, another 2001 project that almost got off the ground. This time we're talking about the five minute pilot that was produced by Rainbow Studios. It was going to be a 3D animated CGI TV series. The turtles can be seen in some bio cards with sort of an old school turtles design, but a bit squished down or something. Casey was given shorter hair and the shredder has an interesting design and color palette. The Foot Clan looked like it was going to go in an interesting direction as well with Peter Laird stating on an old post on his blog, in an attempt to settle on the designs for the Foot Tech Ninja, I dug out an old sketch which had been done during the conceptual process for the Rainbow Studios TMNT CGI project which never materialized. I can't recall who did the sketch but I always thought it was a nice one and I tweaked it a bit to show Lloyd and an image of the sketch of the Foot Soldier is shown which looks very similar to the Foot Clan that is shown in the pilot. It was shopped around networks, but no one was interested at the time, and the show was canned. Hey, did you enjoy some of these turtle stories? Well, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and get a lot more videos on the green machine. And comment down below, what do you think of some of these Ninja Turtle shows that almost happened? But that's it for this one. Keep it tuned here on the Turtle Den, and I'll see you guys in a little bit with another video. Take care. Welcome to A Parent's Worst Nightmare, new toys for the kids, featuring four nimble amphibians known as the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Baskets upon baskets are filled with a number of playthings. There's so much to choose from. Turtle toothbrush, turtle ooze, paint by number, greeting cards. I think you get the picture. We probably feel it five, six times a day if we have it. These pizza-loving compadres can also be found on the big screen. I went with my grandchildren. I was forced into it, really. But you enjoyed it? Yes, I did. Hey Turtle fans, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to follow me on all the social media platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. It's a good way to stay in touch with the channel. And also if you want, go ahead and give the video a share on your social media platforms, Reddit, Twitter, all that stuff. And let's spread turtle mania to the world. Once again, thanks everyone for watching. It really does mean a lot.